various picks. So, um, but also, you, know, you you heard what Rexar said. They had, you know, they, they've done their research. That you know, the, they know, you know, how Nullstone plays. So, some of the draft and some of the bands might be targeted. Obviously, at some of the signature heroes from Nullstone, perhaps Ugi or, or Lord Southwest bands. I mean, I think wasn't it BMG who like first banned Ugi? I think against Nullstone. I think it was in the third game. I think it was the like third that. game. Yeah, because they, yeah, they dealt with so. the second game. Clearly, it worked out. So they're like, yeah, screw that, <laughs> screw the Ugi. Yeah. It's uh, it's possible. I mean, they ban out Kraken here. Yeah, not surprising. I believe they. I'm not sure exactly who they ban. It's not a Swift Blade or Cthulhu Bump. But anyways, those are the four bans, um, coming out right here. So yeah, at least to, to start off in game one. I, I mean, I think that's fine. It's one of those cases like, yeah. okay, you run this awkward hero, world. different exactly. Test the waters against you. See if you can deal with it. If you can't, then ban it perhaps in the future. But uh, ban more of the typical here is what they're going with. Yeah, that's normally what's going to happen. I mean, also like even in. Like uh, particularly B Bo threes, but even Bo five as well. You kind of have like a mini meta, like depending on which series. Like, obviously, we saw in the last series with BMG, like Oogie wasn't picked till last, and then in the next game after that, it was instant ban instant banned in the first banning phase. So it it really can depend. So I mean, depending on how this game goes and perhaps how the next game goes, uh, the sort of shifts on and bans and picks will, will definitely be evident. But like you said, yeah. starting out easy here. Magma's first pick coming from Nelson Game and a follow up uh, pick from Tempest. Um, Nelson Game, obviously, they still got the keeper and I feel you're on the board and and this is sometimes where I think sometimes a first pick Tempest is always a little bit questionable particularly when there's other junglers on the board because it kind of does sort of pigeonhole you in terms of what other heroes you can go for because most likely obviously they're not going to pick up a, a second jungler although it's you know, not out of the question it obviously allows uh, Nullstone to pick up Raps here Magma's kind of two strong hero picks in that respect but um, clearly Rex was uh, sort of valuing the Tempest over any other junglers on the board at the moment so Nothing wrong with that. Tempest, uh, quite the strong history here, of course. Uh, I'm actually intrigued to see if he's speaking of different heroes. I mean, Rex has also shown that they can run that Cersei as far as a support option goes, <laughs> and uh, perhaps a kind of a favorite support option of theirs. We'll see if we get a cut to that. There's the Kinesis, <laughs> though. Just talking about it. Uh, you brought up, yeah, definitely a lot of potential for good <laughs> damage. And speaking of heroes that we don't see too often, but in this case we kind of do, there's the Yogi pickup from Nullstone Gaming. So testing the waters. Well, they're, they're going to test the waters here. <laughs> Against Ugi. We'll see how that works out for them. And, I mean, what's really interesting, though, is that I wonder if Rexars are going to you know, try and pick up a couple of heroes that almost, quote-unquote, counter Ugi completely. Because when BMG actually picked up the, the Mage Bane, like, it, it didn't even counter Ugi. Like, yeah. A hero that is on paper meant to counter Ugi just really didn't have that much of impact. Obviously, there was a lot of other factors to, to play. Obviously, there was a lot more <laughs> other tanky heroes in, in, on the, in the game. Um, but still, I wonder how Rex is really going to address it because I mean, we've seen time and time again if you don't address the Ugi, it's going to you know overpower you. I'm going to pick up the Dark now, Radius. I so like that's... that, yeah. I yeah, well, because I, mean, I mean, the the silence seems like it could be a very yep. powerful tool against the Ugi for for that reason alone with the Dark Blade. So. Yeah, definitely. Also, it's a hard carry as well. So, um, against all the tanky presence from Oogie, like he won't be able to really go toe to toe in terms of right click damage with with Dark Lady. So, I do like the pickup here. Uh, I wonder if they're going to address the Oogie even more with any other picks, but I think Dark Ladies is definitely a good start there. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, got to start somewhere, so nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, you, you got Tempest, obviously, for the ultimate lockdown, even with the shrunken heads up. Of course, they're going to be pulling you in, so yeah, they, 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 they got the tools, it seems like, to definitely address, as you pointed out, I mean, you, you, people, I wouldn't be surprised if they're saying, I'll pick up Mage Bane. Well, yeah, exactly. We saw last week <laughs> in Bad Monkey Gaming, again, a lot of factors came into play, but they went Mage Bane against, it wasn't even just an Oogie. Uh, they had yeah. other, who else was it? It was like, a, it was a doctor, wasn't it? No, it wasn't a doctor. It was, nah, it was like four other tanky yeah, heroes, was, including Oogie. It was like Lord South Forest, Oogie, oh, like Trish. Electrician, that's what it was. Electrician, yeah. Yeah, one of the. I, was, I knew it was like a man intensive yeah, yeah. hero. Like, yeah, that's so. right. You know, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but even that, it didn't really work out in the end. So it's that. That's not the ultimate answer, as you may think it is. Uh, when that's all said and done. So empathophilia, Glacius, pyromancer, torturer. Coming out, a lot of support heavy. Geez. Yeah, like, I really hope they ban the keep of the forest because like, I mean I've mentioned this before, but like if Nelson don't ever pick up, don't pick up a jungler here, like. They always have to run, obviously, a secondary support, unless they do run some funky, like, Lord South Forest jungle, which definitely can work. It just seems, to me, quite obvious that they pick up the Keeper of the Forest here. Like, obviously, like, the Ophelia, sorry, the Empire, no, the Ophelia and Pyromancer bands are, like, okay, but mm -hmm. to me, if he doesn't ban Keeper here, it's kind of a almost first pick coming from Nelson Game, depending whether they want to pick it up or go with the Lord South Forest jungle, but it seems kind of a no-brainer here. Oh, well, they're uh, thinking about this final ban more so Serenia is. Again, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to, uh, to ask you know, more questions about how they run things over there, but if Serenia is more so the ultimate captain, if there's kind of a team effort, but 
Farrow is going to be the final man coming out here. So taking away a uh, solid suicide option there. Gravekeeper being right clicked over here. Now that 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 would be a new hero. <laughs> We've already there's not many new heroes yeah. left that we haven't seen in on tour season sure. three. So that I don't know how they would lane it though. Yeah, like it'd be awkward. Like unless they want to run like maybe dual lane Ugi or dual lane mid Ugi or, or Gravekeeper and then set aside Magnus, but. Because like, where else is Ugi really going to farm? I, I think the only option they really have here is picking up like a suicide or a mid, depending on what Magnus is going to do, and then pick up their second support or weird jungler, depending. But I don't think Gravekeeper... I mean, they could run Gravekeeper secondary support, actually. I guess is the possibility. But yeah, that's what I mean. The Keeper Forest is kind of a little bit obvious. Counters Tempest more so than Tempest Counters Keeper. I can't remember the exact stats, but I mean, I think um, Quincy had the stats where like Keeper versus Tempest, Keeper wins like 65% of the time. Really? Um, yeah, That's something like that. I can't remember the exact stats, but I remember Quincy posting it before. So, yeah, and and that's why I'm a little bit surprised. Like he banned the, the Paramounts and Pharah over the Keeper, and and to me, I I just don't understand why. Like, yeah, okay, obviously, you know, Pyro and Pharah could be picks for Nullstone, but Keeper's just a lot stronger than both of those. But mm. okay, so it's 57, but still, uh, still a pretty sizable. Yeah. Overall, Keeper has the better chance as far as stats go. Devour coming out here for Rexer is interesting. Uh, pick up there, going with the hook option, and that's, I mean, it, it, I mean, the still uh, option. I, I guess, yeah, they're gonna probably end with a just a main support here. So again, uh, Cersei is definitely in my mind once again, as far as, you know, the uh, they they do run it, and they they gets it's against like something like Keeper of the Forest, you know, having a Cersei to be able to take him over and use it early on in the game, very effective, and perhaps the Oogie later game, so. Yeah, but um, it, there is a little bit of synergy on Rex. Like, Kinesis, you can just sort of lift him up in the air, and then obviously Devour can just hook onto that. So uh, kind of a decent setup with, with Devour, actually. Um, I just don't know how it's going to work um, in terms of whether they're going to run Kinesis, Devour, a middle lane, or Kinesis Suicide, for example, mm -hmm. and then pick up a, another support. Unless they want to run, like, a just defensive tri lane with sort of sitting Dark Lady, but depending on the thing against, you probably won't need it. Unless a Polywog, actually. So. Really? Mm. <laughs> Man. All right, another a little bit of a different pickup coming out here. Now that's gonna be uh, that's a yeah, secondary yeah. support. I mean, unless they or... want to run like dual mid Polywog and Repsy, perhaps, maybe. Yeah, yes. no. So they okay. So Jungle okay. Keeper that's here. Different. Yeah. I don't know. Um, huh. Unless I don't know. Unless they're gonna run like. I have no idea unless they're breaking, clueless. Yeah, it's one <laughs> but there's a Cersei though. Yeah, so. there, there's a Cersei, sure enough. I, yeah, I, I'm thinking stuff to like. Uh, well, you know what? Nullstone does like to run an aggressive dual lane top, especially. So I wouldn't put it put it against them running something like a Rhapsody mass top. Even uh, you yeah, got Polywalk mid, Ugly yeah. bottom, something like that. No, that's a decent idea. Like they they picked up Tempest and Cersei, so they wouldn't have the greatest lane presence in in the short lane. Um, so they could easily run a dual lane if they wanted to, and that probably makes the most amount of sense. Although Fuzzy Sloth is on Polywog and he's their suicide player, but uh, you wouldn't see a suicide Polywog priest just make any sense. But um, so actually, there's kind of two hero picks here from Rexars that kind of are addressing the Ugi. Obviously, the first being Dark Lady, which we talked about, but Cersei as well. Like if you can take over Ugi, then it's just going to be Ugi versus Ugi in that respect. Obviously, at level 16, if Cersei does get there, 100% of the damage done. Um, obviously, uh, com from coming out from the other hero. So, uh, two hero picks that I do like uh, from Rexars that are clearly addressing the Ugi. And, and like you know, Serena did say that um, they have done their homework. So clearly, yeah. the, the drafts at least showing it. I'm just a little bit worried in terms of their laning presence. Like they've got Dark Lady, Tempest, and Cersei. A couple of heroes that are a little bit greedy in, in terms of obviously the laning phase, but at the same time, Nullstone don't have the greatest laning presence either, so it, it might actually uh, work out all right. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I know we started the last time, and that, that's just how who Cersei is specifically. You know, when it comes to support options, she's very weak in the laning phase compared to most other, if not all other, supports that we see on the competitive scene. But mid to late game, she is arguably the strongest for the obvious reason. Uh, of her ultimate, but not only that, just the constant illusions that she's spawning and use them for tools for, for vision, for harassment, to keep the other team guessing. Uh, very, very powerful mid to late game support. So, uh, it, overall, no doubt that lineup is about getting to that mid to late game, then definitely that's where they're going to shine. But the early game, that is the question mark. Will they be able to sustain when it comes down to it? So, obviously a pause to kick things off here. Uh, yeah, and again, just stress that, guys, a lot of money on the line here. Pulling up the prize pool split real quickly. Again, over $29,000 on the line here. Uh, you're looking at uh, already you're guaranteed at least 3100 here for finishing fourth place even. But it starts to go up, and, of course, all the way up to 8300 for that first place prize. 
uh, over what is a, a two-weekend cycle. So once again, another good-sized prize pool. Big shout-out to the community with that said. And, of course, the Ursa Core Initiative con con kicking, continuing to kick in and uh, doing its thing. Again, big shout-out to the community once again as far as the eSports Plinko goes. So with uh, you guys investing and whatnot, uh, wouldn't uh, see these prize pools as high as they are. So definitely, definitely good stuff and continuing to do so. Um, Look at the start here for Nolstone. The Polywog's going bottom, actually. We're on a short Polywog here. Four players are going top currently. Now, now they're kind of adjusting here. So is it, it's going to be an Oogie Rhapsody. I was thinking of Rhapsody Magmus, if anything, but it's going to be Rhapsody Oogie, actually. Yeah, I mean, Oogie doesn't do amazing in terms of solo farm, so you kind of do need to sort of babysit him in that respect. And obviously, Magmus can easily solo, but at the same time, it's a little bit risky, like putting him in, in the long lane, because obviously, if he does get picked up, although, you know, Rexus do have sort of a weak laning phase, if he does get um, picked off, then you're going to sort of reduce his farm by quite a bit. So, and at the same time, I think Magmus is a little bit better in the long lane because he has that sort of escape mechanism with his lava surge. So, I'm not. <sighs> I'm not too um, happy about this lone rotation. I would prefer the Magnus top, though, and agreed with you, Breaky, without a doubt. Yeah, so, but that's the thing, though. Like, I, I was seeing how Nolson, they're known for running an aggressive dual lane. It seems like it's always with these seven players, Beaver, Banger, and Drent. So, so no matter what they're playing, they're just going to be yeah. doing it. So they're not afraid to send their carry option in that top aggressive lane, especially with somebody like this with an Oogie. You can be a little bit more aggressive, sure, but yeah, as you pointed, I mean, it doesn't really provide that stun, of course, so... Uh, curious to see how it ultimately works out here from Nullstone's perspective. But uh, sure enough, you got Cersei up here. So it's going to be that Cersei Dark Lady, of course. Now, as we keep stressing, I mean, Cersei not the most powerful laning, but uh, mm -hmm. we'll see. I mean, it, when Tempest rotates over like, level 4, level 5, like they're going to be in a little bit of a. Uh, be a little bit in a sort of bad situation because even though obviously Cersei and Dark Lady don't have the greatest lane presence, they're still going to be able to kill this Oogie like 3v2. And I mean, Keeper's not really going to be able to rotate into the enemy jungle because he doesn't really have an aggressive presence like Aphelia or Parasite. So, I mean, I think they'd be fine between like level 4 and level 5, but even like even at level 6, Nullstone Gaming are going to have a, a tough time in this dual lane top. Now, I, I wonder if this also ultimately has something to do with they wanted to go the aggressive dual lane, but they also didn't want to leave a, a solo to get owned by Devour. Magnus is really the only option on this Legion side that actually has a decent chance to get to Devour, mainly because with that escape, of course, uh, in the Steam Bath. So if a hook does happen, any other hero here on the Legion side would be in a lot of trouble uh, compared to Devour. So, you know, maybe there is some logic there, too. Mm -hmm. That's why they uh, ultimately chose to lane how they did. But what's done is done, so now it's a matter of seeing how it progresses here uh, for either side. You do see the bottom lane. Kinesis trying to harass Polywag a bit, but Polywag actually has that early level advantage. In fact, level 3 compared to level 1 already. So a very good start here for Polywag Priest. Uh, Kinesis is definitely going to get some good levels here as you see a mass creep wave pushing the tower. In fact, there you go with level 2. Probably going to hit level 3 yourself, but uh, still the start definitely more effective so far. For Fuzzy Sloth playing that Polywog Priest. And yeah, something else to note, I mean, Polywog Keeper Rhapsody. That's a very strong trio of heroes that have a lot of push potential uh, in the earlier game stages. So I'm sure that's where Nolson Game is going to try to shine as well, uh, especially against the makeup of this Hellborn team as we keep going back to. I mean, this is not a. Uh, not not the not really the strongest counter pushing team, along just not really the strongest early game team. So I think that's where Nolstone's going to have to really shine, if anything. Uh, getting that level 6 polywalk, getting the level 6 keep in the forest, and making those threatening team fight pushes here at that early stage. So, um, huh, yeah. So I guess they you know, according to stats, maybe not as much as you would think. But I don't know. I feel like they do it more. I feel like they do. Anyone yeah, no, else? Yeah, so. right. But I do like the the aggressive dual lane because obviously like Tempest isn't going to be able to do too much until level five, level six perhaps, and until then. Um, in terms of the bottom lane, though, I th I think I'd give the sort of lane match probably a little bit in favour of Polyol Priest because obviously the electric jolt is just such a great harassing tool, uh, and obviously last hit him uh, tool as well. Um, I, I think it's going to be until like level six, oh top lane. Dark Lady getting a little bit of trouble, but should be fine. Yeah, I think it's going to be maybe like level 4, level 5, level 6 when we start seeing the rotations from Tempest trying to put his stamp on this top lane because, I mean, Dark Lady isn't farming the greatest, honestly, in the top lane, so we'll definitely need to rotate to try and uh, you know, put some farm on Dark Lady. Yeah, uh, you got seriously doing a creep pull right here as far as the pull camp goes, so again, hopefully a little bit more farm. Coming out for Big R along here, playing the Dark Lady, of course, their go-to carry player. Oh, Tar Pit actually connecting right there, but only level one, or the first charge of it even. Not much damage, of course, coming out. So, um, they've done it four times in seven games of Cycle 5. Uh, okay, no, that's fair, yeah. So maybe just as of recently, they've been doing it quite a bit. But um, 
you got the middle lane matchup. I mean, Devour, he actually almost landed a hook early. I don't think it would have been a kill, but it was damn close uh, to putting some good damage onto Magnus. But Magnus was able to avoid it, so uh, he is fine for now. I mean, overall, the GPM charts say this is a fairly even game. Kinesis kind of, you know, falling a little bit behind as far as overall. And then, of course, you got the support options down there. But uh, Cersei kind of coming around a flank. You know, they got the Ward of Sight to spot this Legion side, but obviously Legion team also has their own Ward of Sight. Uh, that is spotting the possible gank incoming. So both teams have some pretty good vision here, and it's working out to really both favor at the same time. I mean, sure, they're falling back, not getting ganked, but Dark Lady now is getting some free farm in the meantime, and that's exactly what you want to see, of course. So uh, she's yeah. still trying to finish that Ring of Sorcery here, it looks like, but or Ring of the Teacher, excuse me. But uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure the Rune Cleaver are going to follow that. Eventually, yeah, most likely. Um, I mean, in the top line, like you see how like defensive like Oogie is playing up here, and, and like this is what I was talking about. Like whenever you go aggressive dual line, eventually the the te you know the jungle line uh, for the enemy team is gonna have a you know level five or six, and he's gonna have that presence, uh, and that's where it gets a little bit scary because bottom lane actually, some... it's Polywog versus Kinesis. They're going at it right here. Polywog puts the hex out. Here comes some more damage up from Kinesis. She's got enough mana for barely one more lift. It looks like will be enough damage. No, well, there comes the tongue tied. On Kinesis, keep the force to assist against one ninja. Still gonna be a Applied. It's saving Polywalk for now. Polywalk gets the Bloodlust kill in the end. Also hits level 6 on top of that. Beautiful support coming out for Keeper the Force. Meanwhile, hook in the middle lane. Magnus gets hooked in. Diva with the ultimate. It's not going to be enough damage, though. And the stun away from Magnus. He will survive in the long run. Top lane also a little bit of action, but no kills going to be happening up there. But, yeah, great assistance bottom lane. And big Bloodlust kill for Polywalk down there. Yeah, and uh, normally what, what we'll see as well is that when Keeper probably gets level 6, they're probably going to try to set up another gank on Kinesis and then start pushing it. And uh, because you talked about obviously the pushing potential, obviously with the Voodoo Wards, and, and just getting that early sort of tier 1 is just such a boost in terms of your whole team there. And it, it can really start the snowball. And obviously, like, Hon is a game of momentum, so, you know, the, the best and earliest sort of start you can get is obviously more favorable in that respect. Um, Tempest is closing on level 6, but I mean, Nolson done the right job here in the top lane that they've just tried to get the lane control. I'm kind of surprised they have, you know, uh, Rex hasn't really been paying too much attention to this pool camp though, because if, you, if they're running a defensive tri lane like with the Tempest, if they just keep their lane by the tower, then Ugi can't even farm in the middle lane actually. Yeah, I didn't really catch all that happened, but I saw the kill basically happen as obviously he landed a hook and ultimately got the ultimate off, so. That's, uh, we we're talking about how Magnus is definitely the best chance here on the Legion side for going against the Devo, but clearly it's still causing issues here. And Devo's just playing it better, it seems like, so. Mm -hmm. Good news there for Rexars. Um but yeah, I mean, you see Devour try to rotate top and get a gank off, but I mean, like, this pool camp is not being used, it's been farmed by Tempest, and I, I heavily disagree with it, because they need this pool camp to really sort of gain lane control. It wasn't blocked from Nullstone, which is arguably like, a little bit of a misplay, but if Rexos aren't actually going to utilize it, then it doesn't even matter too much. I mean, Tempest is coming over, but uh, unless they're going to push them, they're not going to be able to do too much in this top lane, because they won't be able to sort of secure a kill, because the lane's just too much in favor of Nullstone Gaming now in the top lane. Oh my god, middle lane again, a big hook coming out from Plus. Plictisit. I always fail on that damn name. Anyways, Devour did a great job right there. Be beautiful just uh, patience landing the hook eventually. Magnus, you know, he's playing it. I don't know if he's playing it the smartest because he's stunning away before the hook even comes out. That's always so risky in the first place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know, sure, you want to get away from that decay, but it's like you got it. You got to get the, yeah, I don't know, you just got to get better angles. You got to do it at a more appropriate time, not right away as he kind of panicked right there, it seemed like. So, no, uh, you're right though, because I think he's panicking. Because I think he he believes that if he gets hooked, then he's gonna instantly get devoured. But you know, the, the devour cast animation is a lot slower than the lava surge from Magma. So if he does get hooked in, he can just stun away, and then he can never die. So um, I mean, at the same time, yeah, he's gonna get chased down by devour. But if he runs to his tower, like, devour isn't gonna sort of man up by his tower uh, by uh, Magma's tower. So yeah, a little bit of a misplay come out from uh, from Chalo Simeon, but um, in the end, not the biggest of deals. Well, he's 0-2-0 here. That portal key is obviously going to be delayed pretty heavily here as a result of those two deaths, so keep an eye on that. Look at this bottom push, though. No uh, no wards being used. I mean, definitely could have thrown these wards down to guarantee this tower kill, but at the same time, figuring that might as well save the cooldown. They figure they have it anyways. Uh, you got the, one of the Keeper docks probably going to aggro the next creep wave here even. Make sure they, they do get it. Meanwhile, at the bottom room, Kinesis, he's going for it, and actually Rhapsody runs into him. Rhapsody oh, going to feel the front of the mask control. It's not enough for the kill initially, though. In comes the healing potion. Will it be enough to ultimately survive? It uh -huh. looks like maybe. No, the nature's failed off in time. Keeper was just too far away. And with those, oh, he does have boots, but still couldn't get there. Kinesis is doing a good job of chasing, but now is in a dangerous oh, he's spot. So dead. Yeah, he's four so players dead. are here. She doesn't have enough mana just yet oh. for the TP, and she will get caught in the end. 
And down she goes, oh. how about that? They all collapse. <laughs> That was actually a really good trade though, because obviously normally you'd say, oh yeah, a suicide for a support, not a good trade, but I mean, those four heroes all rotated onto uh, Kinesis there. In the meantime, obviously Dark Lady and Tempest pushed top, so actually a great rotation coming out from Rexos, and as a result, obviously, take the golden experience lead, so yeah. good, good trade coming out from Rexos. Absolutely, yeah, that top tower push, and you know, we're talking about Dark Lady's start here wasn't the best, oh actually, middle lane once again, Magnus, now he does stun after the hook, but it's just too much damage coming out. Will Fall Devour, however, is going to be picked off. Rook comes out, actually catches Cersei. <laughs> as soon as she comes in, and she also will maybe fall. No, she's in Viz right now, and oh my god, she's actually oh, going to get away. The Deceive shit. is too powerful to chase her down. you got to have dust against the Cersei. Uh, it's, it's no doubt, and I guarantee you they're going to be picking up some dust from, from now on. So, uh, But we're seeing the pain train starting to kick in, though, from Old Stone Gaming. I mean, again, this is a team-heavy uh, a uh, team that's around fighting as a team. I, uh, I don't know where I'm getting at. But anyway, it's early on in the game, grouping up and doing the push here as we're seeing. So they're trying to take advantage of that. But yeah, in the meantime, Dark Lady continues to push that top lane. And here we go with the TPs. In comes the uh, the CC on the Keeper of the Force initially. Now he doesn't have a root, of course. He will gets hexed as soon as he ports in. They're trying to find Keeper. But speaking of dust, they don't have dust themselves. So... Uh, what you got should be fine. Nature's Veil is going to be wearing off in 9 oh, seconds line, here, line, line. it should be good. Back to the top lane, though. Here we go. Magma stunned with the eruption, and down goes Dark Lady right off the bat. Yeah, they thought they could have kept pushing right there, but little did they know. The initiation was being set up. Is Tempest? Oh, my God. He's hit it. What? Wow. I mean, to be fair, Magma's stun was on cooldown, but okay. still. Well, um, but, yeah... I mean, it, it wasn't a, a bad sort of decision coming out from Rexos because they were pushing mid, expecting the Nullstone game and were sort of uh, pushing with themselves. But at the same time, like when you have a Dark Lady, like she only has seven, like only at 800 HP. She's got no kind of stat items. Obviously, she's just going to rush the the Rune Cleaver. Magnus is off the board, and you have to expect that rotation from Magnus every single time because, I mean, otherwise, like it's that's going to happen to you every single time that you you push for the tier tower if you're not careful. But not the biggest of deals. They really do need to sort of try and steroid this Dark Lady as much as possible because he's going to be the person who's going to address the, the Ugi in the mid and late stages of the game. And at the moment, he's not really too far, or not that far away from his uh, Rune Cleaver. So um, he really do need to start focusing some more farm on Dark Lady. Get the stats going. I mean, I don't see any stacks here on the Hellborn Jungle. Okay, one here on the hard camp, but even uh, maybe try and utilize the Aegis as well. But in the end, not going to do it just yet. I mean, Tempest is farming in those as well, so it's kind yeah. of hard to, to stack and farm where you've got Tempest on your, on your team. Exactly. Well, spreading out those resources here, definitely. So, Devour in the meantime, uh, you know, finish off an omen, his own camp right there. So, yeah, all the jungle being used to its full capacity there as far as Rexars goes and kind of sharing the love in that sense. So, bottom lane, Cersei and Kinesis both down here. Cersei not level 6 just yet. Still level 5, so it doesn't have that twisted visage, as it's called. Going to place a ward of sight here at the bottom. Jungle is going to be found by Keeper the Force and Polywap Priest, though. Okay, she's going to use the Illusion Invis initially. That's the Deceive ability, but and actually will ultimately get away. So <laughs> good job right there, making sure to escape. Does either team have dust yet? It doesn't look like it. Jeez, you figure by now at least uh, one or the other would have some dust. But yeah, both these teams definitely could use some dust. I mean, Cersei has now survived twice because of the lack of it, and no doubt you're the force, you usually always wanted against him, so. Yeah. yeah, it's just hard to have, like, dust when you're, particularly when you've got so many item slots, like, you've got Keeper Force, he's sort of maxed out in terms of these item slots. Support is, or Raps is probably the only hero that could really carry it, but, I mean, he doesn't have that much money, he's only picked up his boots, he's got a TP on him as well, so it's kind of trying to find the person who can sort of carry it, um, whilst obviously uh, still having item slots as well, and it's a little bit hard, but, I mean, they definitely should have it, though. Yeah. Obviously against the Cersei. Well, speaking of Cersei again, continuing to send out some illusions here. And that's the great thing about not only just uh, great harassment, but good for vision too, kind of like a movable ward in a sense. Gives you an idea of uh, where the other team is at, you know, similar to abilities like Feral Rocket and whatnot. So, uh, top lane, they're going to initiate actually on Oogie right here. And Oogie, there's a Tempest ultimate going to guarantee the kill. Now, can they get away in time? I think they should be able to, absolutely. They're going to be fine. Yeah, very good use of the Tempest ultimate. If it wasn't for that, that probably could have gone bad for them. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Devour, he's going to be trapped. And trapping comes out. That's an illusion, Magnus, though. So not really the biggest deal. And the War Trap will be successful. Fuzzy Slot doing his best no-tail impersonation and actually pulling it off pretty well right there onto Devour. So well played. And at least a counter kill comes out in the meantime. But yeah, losing Oogie, though, that's uh, that's not good news, especially at the hands of Dark Lady. I mean, Oogie, man, 265 gold per minute. Beaver, man, yeah. step it up.
Uh, and this is honestly because I think they run their dual lane top. Like you compare him to when he sort of sat in the bottom lane, or even in sat in the middle lane, he was getting so much more reliable farm. Like he's died once, but not only has he died only once, like his CS is incredibly low because whenever obviously Tempest got level six, he had to play a lot more defensive. And like you compare his CS to, to Dark Lady's now, and it's kind of scary seeing that Dark Lady hasn't even picked up her rune cleaver yet. I mean, Uki is kind of the, the one hero on Nullstone Gaming who's gonna be sort of your your carry and. And with him almost on the lowest uh, GPM, you know, minus the support, it's a little bit scary, honestly. Yeah. Um, because when Darkly picks up the Vroom Cleaver, then it's really going to start addressing Ugi. But if Ugi doesn't have any farm, then it doesn't even matter if Darkly doesn't have a, a Vroom Cleaver or isn't that farmed at all. So they are going to start pushing top here. I mean, they don't have Magnus with them, so it's a little bit questionable. I mean, oh, we'll see right here. Uh, all right. <laughs> Yeah, it is 4-0 to be fair, so I guess it shouldn't overlook it too much, or, or look too much into it, I guess, but still. Yeah, the start necessarily not the prettiest for him. Bottom oh oh, middle God. lady, Fintifo, going to save Tempest right there. Yeah, good job, actually. Mac was using the eruption even, but not enough for the kill as a result. So good teamwork coming out once again. Mass TPs to the bottom lane, and Cersei, look at that. They poured out. I love it. They saw it, and they knew it was coming. Of course, they could TP a little faster as a result of going back to base right there. So, well played by, uh, I, that was at least uh, Cersei and uh, getting out of that. I think Kinesis. Kinesis, uh, yeah. yeah, Kinesis as well. Is that okay. four, four, second, four second TP on tier ones compared to three second TP at base? So whenever they saw him TP in, they just all TP'd out. Now, the right play to make. And There's sorry, a Gnome's Wisdom good. purchase, by the way, on Oogie, so that's... Uh, yeah, I mean... It's a decent item, obviously, because all they're going to be doing now is, is team fine. But Rexes are doing the right thing. They can't really team fight unless they've got the the Rune Cleaver, Strong and Head, and Dark Lady, and they're nowhere near that. So Rexes are doing the right thing, just trying to trade as much as possible. The only thing they can really defend is their Rex. Um, they should give up all, all the tier twos as long as they try and trade middle or top. And you see Dark Lady pushing out top, while the rest of the team pushes out mid. It's the right play to make. But I mean, if Nullstone start pressuring high ground, they do need to you know, come back and defend. But they don't have the great counter push though, breaking. So. I mean, if Nelson game do push on, it's going to be hard for Never Rexars to defend. Yeah, it's, uh, this is what we're talking about. The earlier game stage for Rexars, this is their weaker point, no doubt, as far as overall in the game. So, Nullstone, they know it. They're trying to take advantage, and they're actually doing a pretty good job of it here. They at least get a response. They're going to do some good damage to the tower, not kill it necessarily. But again, keeping Rexars occupied. You do see at the top lane, Dark Lady is still kind of up here. She's trying to finish that Rune Cleaver still. She's actually very, very close. Uh, to getting it. And actually, they will back up here on Nullstone, you know. Again, they used some cooldowns. Not going to risk It's the right it. play to make. Because like, although Rexus don't have the great counter push, they still have the sort of a, a decent way of uh, defending high ground. They've obviously got the Devourer hook. So if Nullstone Gaming do get sort of hooked once, then that's going to be a guaranteed kill. And then from there, the team fight's going to be over. So it's just incredibly risky pushing up uh, high ground. Obviously, they, they use the Voodoo Wards. I mean, unless they want to run some kind of just push and then back off, like they, they drop the, the Voodoo Wards and then back off, and so they can't get hooked from Devourer, then that could definitely be a strategy. Yeah. I mean, the tower dropped down to half HP, so it's it's definitely a thing they could you know, question about doing the next time Voodoo Wards were up. Um, but it's still so risky, seeing as you know, one hook from Devara can, can end the team fight just like that. Mm -hmm. Get to the top lane, Magmus is going to make his way up here. Of course, they do have a couple of Porta Keys now, both on Polar Walk and Magmus. Magmus did have to rush it more so than he probably would have liked, but now he finishes off his Steam Boots right there on top of the bottle that he has. So yeah, overall, a pretty good start in that sense, at least coming out, yeah, especially with those two deaths that he had earlier on in the game. So. Farming about 270 gold per minute. But yeah, Rune Cleaver on Dark Hoodie. Uh, no stacks necessarily here in the jungle just yet. Again, they do have a Tempest. We're talking about the earlier. But uh, still, her farm is going to enhance nonetheless. They got a double stack Ancients currently. Like to see them maybe triple stack that here and perhaps have Dark Hoodie go over to them. ASAP to really maximize that farm. But Polywalk Priest remains on top here as far as GPM goes for his side as he's been sitting over that 400 gold per minute. Again, he's got that portal key at the Grave Lock at the Steam Boots here. Intrigued to see where he goes, because this is one of these heroes, I mean, could go several options, could go something like the Staff if they want to go for more of just a very push-heavy. Restoration Stone eventually, of course, considered pretty good. Oh, um, Kinesis. Uh, Kinesis bottom lane, yep, he's in a lot of trouble. Root comes oh. out, and that will guarantee the kill <laughs> on top of him. So the uh, combo of Magnus and Keeper, too strong to handle. So, But, yeah, what do you think Poliwag may ultimately go for here? Will it be more of a tablet even, more utility? or? Um, honestly, I, I think... <laughs> I don't think it matters too much because once Dark Lady picks up the strong head, they're going to be have a lot of trouble sort of bursting him down. I think you can go either one of two ways. You can go the Staff of the Master um, or go perhaps 
um, into the icon. On the icon, I'm, I'm not too fussed about though, because like I said, it's not going to be offering him too much. They're not going to be able to get a lot of hero kills on the board because they're going to be sort of just sort of pushing and not really sort of ganking in that respect. Um, but yeah, just going back to sort of the strategy here of, of Rexos, they're like if they can delay into the Dark Lady Strong and Hedge, there's nothing that Nelson can really do to sort of have any kind of addressing to it. So in that respect, Nelson, they really do need to try and find some kind of advantage or, or take some kind of trade here before Dark Lady picks up the Strong and Hedge because once she does, then the team fights are going to be really hard for them to sort of take down because I mean there's no kind of physical presence here from Nelson at all. So um, I mean in the next 10-15 minutes they're going to be in a little bit of trouble honestly. Devour. Let's take some damage initially at the top lane but going to be fine. We do see the Ancients though. Yeah they know it's happening. Oh. Magnus doesn't actually kill some of the Ancients and he's going to steal the last one right there. So I mean Dark Red got some of them but at the same time Nelson did a job of making sure she didn't get absolutely everything and taking some for themselves. A good job of the uh, control right there. Now there's a ward aside. I was going to say that spots all this. Now they are going to counter ward it, but at the same time they know now that they were seen. So not as secret and sneaky as they were hoping for. But in the end they are going to group up. It looks like here comes the push middle lane now from uh, from Nullstone Gaming. So top lane in the meantime is pushed in by Rexars. Good counter push come now. You look at that gold difference, man. Yeah, it's basically identical here. As well as the experience even only being very slight. Of about a thousand or so. So uh, this continues to be a very, very even game in that sense uh, at this point. Rex. I definitely think that is to the credit of Rexars. Yeah, definitely. Rexars definitely shouldn't fight here at the tier 2. They just defend the racks since it's almost like all the game plan here. De delay, delay, delay before De Dark Lady gets strung in because But if, if Dark Lady sort of team fights without strung in he's going to instantly die and they're going to be sort of forced to fight 4v5. So, yeah, it, it's almost like a, they get the, to the clock is ticking in terms of Nullstone Gaming. If they can really force anything, try and get some kind of good trade, whether it be Congo or Rex. Because, like I said before, Dark Lady Strong and Head is just going to be such a massive impact. They don't have any kind of sheep sticks. The only kind of um, person that can really address him is the Polywog Priest. And he does have the portal key, so perhaps if they can get a good initiation on Dark Lady, even with the Strong and Head, uh, they have uh, at least some kind of presence in the team fights uh, for Nelson Gaming. See right there, as far as Kinesis stats go. Willow Keeper definitely known for running him as well. And they have the Foxy, as we've seen several times before, but Rexers, they too uh, have ran him and have a, one of the. Only two teams have a victory with him in Haunter Season 3, so that's some more good news in their favor there. But uh, that Rune Cleaver continued to take shape. Again, not excelling crazy-like by any means, but it is going a little bit up. 125 gold per minute right now for that Dark Lady. Glowstone just picked up on Oogie and is going to have icon, that brought yes. up. So, yeah, going for the Icon here. And that's always one of those interesting guys. I mean, Oogie is one of these heroes, kind of a staple pickup almost to get an icon of the goddess. But, you know, getting it a little bit later on in the game, but 21 minutes in now, I mean, so he's not going to have it until, say, around 23, 24 minutes even. So, that's, uh, mm -hmm. is that still worth it? I mean, I mean, it is a great item on, on Oogie, and obviously they're going to start team fighting. Um, they're not going to be ganking too much because I think Rex is going to try and dodge in as much as possible, but. In sort of the the mid to late game, I think it's still a good presence. It's such a core cool pickup on on Oogie as well. Like you need to have that constant regeneration to spam out your spells. But um, Nelson, they really do need to sort of try and force something here. Nelson Gaming to at least take the, the tier two top because like Rexos are clearly just dodging every single team fight before the, the Dark Lady Strong and Head and. I don't know if they could even get Rax, but we talked about how you know, perhaps they have great pushing potential. Uh, maybe just sort of throw the wards down on the bottom lane, but I mean, Rex has done a great job in terms of, sort of making sure they push out the bottom lane because that's the one that's most vulnerable. The, the tower has got half HP bottom lane, whereas all the other tier threes are got full HP. So, um, in that respect, uh, not saying Gaming do need to sort of uh, make a move in terms of trying to get some kind of trades. They do take all the tier twos tower, all the tier twos now, but. Um, that's going to be it, really, and, and Dark Place really closing on that strong head. I mean, does she have the Mighty Hammer or the, the Hammer, what it's called? Uh, the uh, Warhammer. Uh, Warhammer. I, I don't know, honestly. I, I want to say I saw her purchase it, I believe, so I'm pretty sure she just needs the pattern. And on 100%, we don't see it on her, obviously, so that's one of those things where still no access, unfortunately, to something like a stash here, but uh, as a spectator, at least. But uh, we're going to go ahead and say that she does have the Warhammer, so yeah, it needs the 1300 gold for the pattern. I mean, the way she's farming, I wouldn't be surprised at all with now 440 gold for me to continue to raise. So 
Uh, but yeah, as you mentioned, a lot of towers to take. It's like you, you think the next logical step would be to look to do a Congor kill. And Milson, the, you see, I was going to say right here, Rex is doing a very good job of even preparing for that in a sense. But as I say that, their ward gets counted. It's a good job by Milson at the same time. Look at Cersei, though, man, continuing to be the pain that she is. Uh, she's just one of these few supports that can do this. I mean, she's literally in the Hellborn jungle or Legion jungle by herself. And she gets away because of that deceit, because of the illusions that she uh, constantly spawning and keeping uh, Nullstone Gaming guessing, keeping them occupied as far as falling back. Yeah. And if anything, buying more time for a team to get that farm needed to have the best chance. So, yeah, just uh, again, proven to be more, more a great hero pickup here. Yeah, it's really frustrating. But, I mean, one thing I would like to see him do, though, is I'd like to see him take over uh, Dark Lady Illusions and start pushing out lanes because, I mean, Rex are going to try and delay, 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 and the best thing to do is obviously sort of split push and, and or sorry, split push and counter push, and the best thing to do is obviously with the Illusions from Dark Lady because um, obviously that the hard carry here for Rex was. Um, but, I mean, he has been taking over Illusions, but more so of himself, and I don't think that's really the best thing to do. Honestly, I think taking over Dark Lady would be a lot more better. And seeing as you can constantly... Um, continues to spawn illusions of illusions. You, all you need to do is take over one illusion from Dark Lady and just sort of um, push out the lanes. That's uh, really stop or slow down at least enough on Gamers push, but there's the strong and head Dark Lady, so the next team fight Rex are definitely ready to take it. So uh Nelson and Gaming might have missed their timing honestly. Yeah, I I it's it, I mean, I was gonna I was gonna sit here and say I'm like Dolstone definitely should be getting involved more fights, but at the same time, you no, know, they've been pushing towers. Obviously, they have all ladder towers killed, so it's not like they're not trying to get involved. It's just good job by Rexars, really. You know, making yep. a point of not choosing to defend at most of the cases, really all the cases even, saying, you know what, you have the better early game team. We're not gonna let that phase us. We're gonna just let you get what uh, get what you want, and we'll be fine as the game progresses on as a result. So. Uh, yeah, you'll see so many teams where we, we see that plenty of times where, you know, it's clear that they, they have a lesser of a stronger team, or they have the weaker team, I guess we better way to say it, uh, earlier on, yet they still try to defend against the mass push heavy teams, and they end up wiping because of it. So, middle lane in the meantime, here we go. Shurkanet popped onto the bower. He's on top right there. Probably about free circle Magnus, but with the Shurkanet on Devo, he's realizing no damage him a little bit to Tempest, and now Magnus even in some trouble. Is Devo going to chase? Doesn't look like it. Wait, how about oh, that man, pickup too? Devo going well. the uh, shrunken head here. Oh, definitely the right place to right um, decision to take. Like, obviously, it, it takes off the keeper route. But again, like I mean, I stated it before, but there's no physical presence here from Nullstone Gaming. It's completely magical. Shrunken head is a complete counter to the whole uh, whole of Nullstone Gaming's team. Like, what are they gonna do? Just like right click him? Like, it's just not gonna happen. The only way in terms of it's you know they can really time make a difference in team fights if they get some good initiation with the Morphin and, and Tongue Tide. But even that, it's only going to be on either Devourer or Dark Lady, and then if one of them is, isn't really addressed, then what evil one was going to do so much damage in team fights. So, yeah, yeah Nelson Gaming just a little bit, honestly, awkward in terms of their draft and strategy. I mean, the draft isn't too bad, but they need to obviously force it, because now the Shrugging Heads are picked up from Rexars. I mean, Nelson Gaming, they've got no way to really deal with these shrunken heads other than like I said the, the polywalk morph but if he's getting focused first from Rexars then yeah no game gaming a little bit um, hands are tied in that respect yeah you sure they got the keeper route to stop something like a diva ultimate but that's not what you want to be doing of course you want to save that exactly. for the tempest ultimate if anything so uh, it really is a difficult time now for Nelson. And that's kind of the hump right here where you figure, okay, now it's Rexar's turn to really start taking a little bit of a lead here and, and a good advantage. Because now with the token life on Darkly, obviously he has a shrunken uh, rune cleaver here. It's getting only better. He didn't choose to go the Abyssal Skull, and I'm a little bit curious about that. We see that frequently on, on especially these melee yeah. carries. I mean, that's more just in terms of farming, and I think actually the shrunken head, he's going to go back for um, about 95% sure, because it's going to increase his farming potential, but I think he, yeah, so there's the Abyssal Sky as, as, ex as expected, but he needs to pick up the shrunken head, because if there was a team fight, then, you know, the Abyssal Sky is not going to be able to help him compared to a, a shrunken head, and he can obviously go back for it as well, so I did like the, the prioritization of the shrunken head, because without it, he just wouldn't be able to team fight, so yeah. he's going to go back for it now, and then his, his GPM is going to increase even more, so... And let the dark litty rain begin. Yeah, this is, this is. I, if I was no stun, I'm definitely not feeling good, honestly. Because again, they they had a little bit of a window earlier on. I mean, sure, just great playing by Rexers, but perhaps should have tried a little bit harder to even break into the base earlier on. Because uh, now it's uh, now it's going to be even more difficult, and it's just going to get more difficult. 
as things progress here. At least that's the idea. So, uh, I mean, you look at Polywog free. So he went a sack. He ended up going to sacks down now. You know, so no play to Greaves on Keeper here. So that kind of makes sense, I guess. But uh, 3,100 gold now saved up. So. Resto and Keeper already, though. That's oh, decent. Oh, wow. Fun, to be yeah. Fair. Yeah, I wasn't expecting <laughs> I mean, that, but... Holy crap. Yes, I mean, in terms of the initiation, like, and unless uh, Dark Lady's positioning is is completely perfect, like, but they still have ways of obviously sort of jumping in with the the Polywog Priest and the Magnus. If, if Polywog Priest can get a good jump on Dark Lady and then follow up from uh, a Magnus route, they still have the the double route from Keeper as well, and obviously let alone the, the damage from Oogie. I think the biggest thing is just trying to burst down Dark Lady before the Shrunken Head's pick popped off. She's only got like about thirteen hundred HP, so they can easily drop her from full to nothing, and um, without him popping the Shrunken Head, if the initiation is there. But that's obviously if the initiation's there. And, I mean, they do have the portal key, so it shouldn't be the hardest thing to do. But obviously, it does depend on big R Long's um, positioning in team fights, for example. Yeah, you see Tark today, I mean, she's known for getting a lot of farm. That's how this this hero just shines with it. I mean, as any hero, frankly, would. But uh, she's good at getting there, especially. And if you let her get there, there's there's not many Betty better carry heroes with that farm that are going to be scarier. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, again, continuing more, more dangerous things for an old stone game in here. You see at the top lane is spawning of a Dark Lady Illusion. They're going to try to bait right here. you got to figure old stone. They, this is pretty obvious, yeah, by now. <laughs> the creeps are doing massive damage, so it's like, that's a fake one, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Magma's doing a bit of counter-pushing bottom lane. He's working on a shrunken head himself, speaking of that, and uh, trying to pick that up. Another 1,600 gold on Oogie here. He's, of course, got that icon. No charges on it yet, sitting that, that in, the, uh, in the Gnome's Wisdom. Continuing to, you know, his farm has definitely gone up quite a bit, but got 387 gold from it, so that's good news. But it is still about 100 GPM currently behind the dark, and I don't know if you could expect it to catch up at this point. So uh, he is working on a shrunken head with this in. There's the mighty blade, and uh, so another thousand gold, and that'll be a big pickup. We talked about how dark and he's pretty good against the Oki, minus a shrunken head though, because once he gets that shrunken head, of course, can pop that to remove the silences, and things become yeah. a little easier. <laughs> That's true, but I mean, we, we've Nolstone no picking up Shrunken Heads is not as impactful as the Shrunken Heads picking up from Rexars because they've still got the Devourer and obviously they've got the, the Dark Lady as well um, in terms of sort of the right click damage, but also they've got the Tempest as well. So there's a lot more sort of shrunk, um, sort of counters and sort of addresses here from Rexars compared to Nolstone. So yeah, the Shrunken Heads are pretty decent and yeah, they're pretty a good pickup, but compared to the Shrunken Head pickup from Rexars, it just, it just doesn't compare. Um, and now, like Noel's saying, that they've sort of gone back in terms of what their strategy was. They're trying to sort of, you know, take it late game, trying to sort of, you know, slow it down, trying to farm up. But I mean, it's just not going to work in ter compared to sort of uh, the Rex stars. They've got late game of Cersei, Dark Lady, and Tempest. So it's a little bit strange, honestly, in terms of the strategy from Noel's saying gaming. They're going to try and delay almost, but it just seems obviously not the, the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it just seems like I a guess losing effort. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, they, I guess they don't have the any kind of other sort of. Um, thing to do, I guess, because they can't really push into Shrunken strong, strong Head and, and, and Token now and Dark Lady, but at the same time, it's like if they delay it, then they're sort of just uh, sort of uh, losing in that respect as well. It so really a is. double-edged sword. Yeah, double-edged sword, catch-22, whatever you want to say. Yeah, it's just one of those cases where, again, they had it. it that's because, though, be, earlier in the game, they just didn't t push it as much as they perhaps should have, so... Um, yeah. And, you know, a lot of it, at the same time, you could also just simply argue, you know, that's where draft comes into play. Rexar is doing a good yep. job with their draft compared to Nullstone. Definitely. And giving themselves the chance of, uh, you know, if they get to this point that it's going to play out like this. So, I mean, you know, here we are sitting out much how much better Rexar is looking. Yet the, the, the gold difference continues to be very minimal. I mean, right now it's getting up to about a 5,000 experience lead now, sure. For Rexar, so but it, it gets so kind of looking at it from that perspective, you just say to yourself, okay, well this is actually a pretty even game. Oh, okay. But actually, oh, this is big, yeah. Okay. No, he hit oh the my God. Pustula. Oh Pustula God. MVP. He taunted oh Devour, but in the meantime, Oogie, oh he gets hooked in. He's still not out of the woods just yet, but he has support nearby. And if Dark Lady continues to chase, this could be dangerous actually. So. Dark Lady somewhat committing. Devo comes in though, and with the flank, here comes Cersei. Oh the protective God. ability will save him initially, and then Rook gonna lock him in place. Mass control comes out. Not in time though, so <laughs> the getaway is successful. That Devo, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. That's unfortunate. Oh the simple um, misclick. And not the biggest of deals though. Like that, that, I think that could have actually worked out a lot worse for for actually Brexos if they weren't careful. Like when they lose that that jump there, I, I was expecting actually a jump from Keeper and the, the team fight just burst out. But I mean, Darkley didn't have her her token either, so that could have been a little bit risky. But um, 
it's pretty better that nothing or the team fight didn't really break out too much. But I know I'm trying to pick up on Polybob Priest as well now, actually. But yeah. again, it's just it's just not going to be the same, honestly. And so uh, I, I don't really know what Nullstone are sort of thinking, whether what they can do. I and mean, like I said, they still have possibilities in terms of team fights if they burst down the Dark Lady and, and get the jump on her. But I mean, with the the charging strike as well, she's not going to really be in melee range before the team fight really breaks out. So. Unless they have some crazy kind of flank position, it's going to be hard to really catch her in team fights. Yeah, so some grouping up here from Nullstone and going to farm out their Legion jungle, perhaps making their way to the bottom lane. Again, Congor obviously not up with uh, it. Uh, I, I was going to say something, yeah, the tokens definitely weren't up without Dark Hitty, as you see there. So perhaps in the next uh, three to four minutes here, I expect to see Congor. Coming back up. But yeah, I mean, that just really goes back to you, though. As far as the struck and head pickup on Polywild Priest, things like that, where, I mean, it's it's a good pickup, sure. I mean, again, there's great reason for it and helping against the silence against Dark City, amongst other things. But I, with where you're at, I just feel like, you know, the more aggressive take of an item, something like the Hellfire, they, something like the Sheep Stick. Yeah, I mean, even the, the Storm Spirit would have worked quite well because, like, there's obviously another way to fight around the team fight from Rexus because, obviously, we stated before that the Shrine Head on, on Dark Lane and Devourer is going to be a no go in terms of the team fight. So, either they've got to burst her down before she pops up the Shrunken or sort of delay the team fight until after the Shrunken Head's picked up because, if you know, it's only nine seconds now in terms of the, the Shrunken Head duration from Dark Lady, and, and nine seconds isn't too much. So, whether they can sort of delay the team fight to sort of wear out the Shrunken Head from Dark Lady, so, like, maybe she pops the Shrunken Head and they sort all, all retreat and then they go back in after you know, seconds after. It'd definitely be a, sort of a strategy because she's only got 1500 HP and that's really, really quite minimal in terms of the magic damage coming out from Nelson Gaming. So if they pick up the, the Storm Spirit here on Storm uh, on Polywell Priest, sorry, like Dark Lady will jump in, pop, pop up the Shrugging Head, but the, the target she's going for is going to be Storm Spirit and that's just not going to be, you know, able to, to, to sort of be, you know, be, get bursted down. Obviously, that's going to delay the, the sort of Shrugging Head or, you know, increase the. Uh, sort of time it's going to be on the dark ride, and then after the, the trunk has uh, finished, then obviously they can start bursting it down. So there's kind of two ways in, in how to really deal with it, but um, yeah, the trunk and head is just a neither one of those ways. So uh, I do disagree with the pickup, honestly. Yeah, Tempest is trying to be a little crafty right here, but uh, in the end, he's by himself. Obviously, that's another illusion coming out. Meanwhile, in the Hellborn jungle, a lot of illusions this game. Jeez. Oh, so Cersei does though, but uh, yeah, even on Legion side coming out, they're gonna throw a hex on it. Cersei speaking of her, yep, she gets caught and she eventually does fall. So Cersei dead, uh, not buying back or anything like that. So now it's a five versus four. Nice shrunken head from Devour right there. It should be fine. The oh, TP, oh the root was just oh. out of range. Keeper was going That'd all in for it. it. Yeah, it would have been. That would be worth it definitely because they didn't have buyback on either uh, Cersei and Devour. Polywog uh, wards were still up, so they could have e easily got the Rex there if, if Devara dies, but not so much now. Rex is going to go in actually with Root down. Yeah, swing and a miss, but here we go. They're not going to miss this one. Debo, no shrinking at this time. He's going to be gone on Ogi in the front lines. Great Talba support though. Team support overall coming up for the Hellboard team. Meanwhile, Kinesis, he's feeling the front of it. Now comes another Tarpit, but the Diva lockdown. Tab is coming in as well. He has an ultimate. Now Kinesis, all oh, the hook misses on top of that. And Ogi still remaining alive. The primal range coming through right here. Gonna keep him alive. They get the kill on a Dark Lady. It was kind of two different fights going on, and it works out in favor of Nullstone Gaming right here. The primal surge, excuse me. It is gonna be wearing off now, but Nullstone, some yep. way, somehow. In a pretty good spot here. They chose not to Tempest Ultimate Oogie. Now at the same time, Keeper, Keeper would have very likely stopped it, so that probably makes sense, but... Oh, man. That that team fight from Nullstone was exactly what I was talking about. They actually took two different fights there. Like, Oogie was tanking all the damage from Rexos while Darkplay was going in on the other half. Like, Darkplay popped the shrunken head, but, I mean, they just kited her completely for the eight seconds, and then when it was down, they turned back on and instantly bursted her down. So great team play coming out from, from Nullstone game there. Knew exactly how to really deal with the uh, shrunken head, but it Massive that's, hook on the Magnus yeah, there. Yeah, that's a big hook on a Magnus. He's going to stun away Will be five. Oh, oh my god, god. old Tabitha element! He gets all five here, comes Magnus! Oh. He's shelling the the Rajan! He will stun and protect him on It's going to be canceled immediately! And no stone gaming just melts away as if they weren't even there. Oogie is some way, somehow still alive. The Primal Rage is coming through and surge, whatever it's called. He gets the kill on Magnus! And Oogie actually showed his power! Are you freaking kidding me? He's going to turn it on and devour! How is Oogie doing this? That's how the hero works, I guess! Wow! I mean, what should have just been a complete wipe of Nullstone, somehow Oogie remains and does his thing to at least clean up on a couple before porting out. Holy crap. 
Like, that Amazon was oh, so fucking big, man. So massive, and yet, Uki just survived the whole thing and then just turned on it. Like, he could have easily manned up all three of those and would have been fine. Dark Lady was down, but they are going to go take Kongo here, and this is exactly what, you know, Rex has need because after the Strong Head is down from Dark Lady, she has no way of really sort of surviving in these team fights, so the, the, the token is definitely necessary um, to really sort of sustain in these team fights. But oh my god, man, Uki, we, we have seen it before, but jeez, man, so, so damn tanky. What? You know, I think a big thing about that fight, as Kongo is sure enough dropping here in favor of Rexars, I saw, so when they got the Tempest Ultimate, Magnus actually was a little bit delayed just because of where he was at the time. He actually channels his eruption first. By the time his channel finished, the Tempest Ultimate just about finished as well. I'm pretty sure Oogie got his Shrunken Head off before he was able to stun it with it. Now, as I say that, Magnus comes in. That was a Cersei Magnus, by the way, as I'm realizing now. God, I hate that hero. Anyways, Kongo's down. And obviously, uh, Dark Lady picks up the token of life. You see Magnus on the Legion team trying to take out uh, somebody, or at least distract, but he couldn't get there in time. So, well played coming out from Rexars as a whole, and again, getting that token absolutely big for them once again. Yeah, but, uh, so, for, so for Rexars now, the team fight is like, the last team fight, obviously before that, the Tempest Ultimate, the one before that, like when they had, uh, I think, Ugi, they were taking down Ugi here in the bottom lane, and um, and then Darkley was going in, obviously, with his Shrunken Head. Like, they need to make sure the team fight is, is all conjoined as one, because Darkley, they, she needs to really make use of the Shrunken Head. If, if she's not really doing a lot of the damage uh, with her Shrunken Head up, then it's just going to be delayed and kind of be wasted. So when it goes down, then Nullstone Gaming have the opportunity and really have the timing to take these team fights. So they need to be as conjoined as one. Pick one target and use Dark Play to go on it, but they're going in. There's a jump on a Dark Kitty right here. She's going to be gone on. She is Hex currently. She is done the War Trap on her. The tongue tied to follow Oogie in the back on Rue comes out. And Oogie doing his Oogie thing once again. Kinesis goes down. Tango's Dark Kitty. She's going to come back up though. Can they fight her off still? Dark Kitty. She's still being locked down. The lockdown's unbelievable here. Dark Kitty will fall. Polywalk Priest. It's way too powerful to handle against Currently, apparently. Give it the force in the meantime. That's the Cersei Keeper. He gets the second route off, but he will fall in the end. And Nullstone Gaming is doing it here. What surely was looking like Rexars getting over that that, that hump there and uh, looking like it was going to be downhill ride for them. Not so much as Nullstone, and now they're breaking into the base. The melee rack's being gone on. No buyback for Dark Lady. Not much they can do here. Melee Rax is going to fall. Range Rack's going to go down most likely. So, Rexar is doing what they can ultimately, but it's just not going to be enough to hold. Will they get a second a set of Rex is the question. Like, they killed Darkly twice without her even popping the Trojan head yeah. once. Like, man, Polywalk's lockdown was insane. That was. Absolutely insane. I think they got a war trap on him as well, but hooking actually onto Oogie. But no, see, that's a, I don't know if that's a good hook. That's I mean, a bad thing. That's like, uh, no, I didn't want to do that. So, yeah, just, just delaying once again, if anything. But, yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the Polywalk lockdown, you you got to give them the credit as far as staggering the stunts with that set. I mean, literally, I, I was clicking on her for most of that fight. She could not check it out. Now, there's the Tempest Ultimate. Will he have the follow ups the question? So, this one not as big because, yeah, look at that. There, there's zero follow up. The mass control finally comes out, but Kinesis is going to fall, and then Melee Rax is ultimately going to go down here. Looks like Dark Lady. Nope, maybe not. Actually, Magnus gets pulled in. Magnus going to fall to Demon right there, but Ogi now doing her thing once again. Primal Rage or Surges up. You want to call it Rage, but anyways, Devo's taking some good damage. One more tarpon, maybe going to be enough for the kill. And Tep is coming back in, so now the chase is on in favor of Rexars. Obviously, they've lost a lot, but if they can get some pickoffs here, this could be big, actually. Polywalk Breeze, he's going to be caught by Dark Lady. The War Trap comes in, War Trapping himself, even. And in the end, in trouble. In the meantime, that's a Cersei Polywalk, who gets his own wards down. And now going to be on the run with that shrunken head. She needs to get away, though. She tongue ties. And the portal key. Wow, well played right there by Serenia. And this fight just doesn't end, man. Oogie finally locked down once again. And is Oogie actually dead? He actually is dead. A hat trick coming out for Dark Lady. Wow. I mean, honestly, the end actually pretty good for Rex, considering they saved the second melee Rex there. But that's exactly what I mean. Like they need to lock down the Uki. They've got Devourer strong and head. They've got Tempest strong and head. They just need a strong and head and just kill him straight away. They've got the lockdown, and like make sure that you know, like I said before, that Dark Lady her strong and head is being used to good effect. If they're bursting down Uki in that team fight with a seven second strong and head from Dark Lady, then that's exactly fine. But it's when these sort of uh, different sort of team fights go on at different times, when there's sort of two or three team fights all in one big team fight, then it's really, really bad for Rexas because Dark Lady gets kited with her shrunken and head and because there's no lockdown. And when that happens, then obviously, you know, they just bait out and wait out the shrunken and head from Dark Lady. And then when it's up, then they just fight back into it. But when they all lock down one hero, then it's fine. And, and the, you know, the team fight is perfectly uh, acceptable from Rexas. And, you know, Dark Lady can dish out the damage. But unless the lockdown's there from Devour and, and Tempest, then Dark Lady isn't too effective by herself, honestly. So. Yeah.
Um, but yeah, so some more pickups, honestly, to sort of try and delay the uh, the uses of the shrunken head dark lady. Like the, the green triangle from R from Rhapsody is fine. Uh, I'd like to see maybe a storm spirit or even like a hellflower or sheep stick pick up from Oogie and, and uh, Polywog priest because they've really got to play around this shrunken head dark lady because once once it's up, there's not much they can do. But once it's down, then obviously there's a lot. So Keeper in trouble right essentially. here. Polywog priest response, and here we go another big fight. Keeper the forces mouth. In comes the eruption from the Agnes, though. Devo and Tempest are going to be caught. It's not going to be enough damage for a kill on either. At least in Actually, Rhapsody caught in the background as well, and she's now in trouble against the Kinesis. A lot of chasing happening. Darkly is locked down. Here we go with the Polywalk Priest locked down once again. Magnus, no, he could have stunned because of the Diva hook. A beautiful hook from Diva right there, and now he's going back in on the Polywalk Priest with the Shrunken Head. Down goes Polywalk as a result. Well played on their part. Oogie, in the meantime, he has a Shrunken Head. He still wants blood. I don't know if he's going to find it, though. Darkly invis currently, and that should be that. So, yeah, a couple of pickoffs in favor of Rexars right there. On to Keeper and Polywalk Priest. You know, I was going to mention, uh, Oogie, before that chaos happened initially even, Oogie actually did go the Frostfield play. After she survived in that crazy fight even before all that. So, um, go on the Frostfield play to follow up. Now she's building into a Sheepstick, it looks like. But yeah, I, I was going to so say, though, exactly, <laughs> should she have maybe gone for the Sheepstick first, do you think? I think she should because obviously the the armor is going to be very very useful against Dark Lady, but they need the lockdown. Like they don't even like Dark Lady's not going to do any damage if they can lock her down, and they can easily lock her down. Obviously, if they pick up the Shrimp Sticks, for example, and and they've got the burst damage and the damage to really deal with her. But it's just, when the Shrunken Head is up, then it, there's a little bit of trouble. Honestly, I'd like to see Dark Lady sort of. Um, I think what's the second chart? It's like what, six seconds left on Shrunken Head. I'd like to honestly see her like sell it and, and rebuy it because. Honestly, that's the only thing that's keeping her alive. Like you saw in the last team fight, she was chasing Polywog Priest for three or four seconds, and and without the lockdown, like I said, she doesn't have the damage because they're just gonna run away and chase her. And, and although she does have the face boots and the, and the charging strike, there's not enough, honestly, to to burst someone down. So, yeah. it, honestly, Devour and Dark Lady need to be a pair in terms of who they're they're, they're targeting. Devour and and Dark Lady, be like, okay, guys, we're going on this guy. We're gonna I'm gonna ult him, and then I'm gonna shrunk, and there's nothing they can do. And then obviously we're gonna just burst this guy instantly down. But when Dark Lady's sort of chasing and running around the team fights, not really you know attacking anyone and it gets a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, awkwardness because you know she's really wasting the shrunken head charges and, and once it's off obviously you saw the burst potential they have to instantly kill dark lady so honestly that the lockdown for breakfast has to be a little bit better uh, and obviously that the initiation can be there for nelson if they're not careful as yeah. well i mean you gotta think the sheep six and how far are going to start happening obviously we're already talked about with Ogi, about both magnus and especially polywog priest more than likely, I would think that's going to be a case for them. I mean, whether it's the Hellflower or the Sheep Stick, you know, up for, up for their choice in the end. But uh, we'll see. I mean, 2,800 gold saved up on Polywalk Priest. As, as about 23 seconds re remaining on the Resurrection, of course. So, yeah, just what a crazy game this has been, though. I mean, it was, a, it was definitely a slower-paced game to start things off here as far as game number one is concerned. And, you know, we thought that that was ultimately to Rexar's advantage, and it almost like they were over the hump, and it was going to be a down – downhill for them, but at the same time, Noel Stone came in specifically Oogie yet again doing his thing. Beaver Bang, there's a reason he's 4-0 and on this hero, uh, including a very big win last weekend against BMG, of course, to ultimately help knock them out. Um, and even getting a ban in that third game as a result of it. So, yeah, this is what we talked about in the drafting stage, or more so you, of like, okay, do you ban Oogie or not? Well, maybe maybe give it a chance the first game. <laughs> no matter how this game finishes, I'd something tells it, me. Yeah, they're going to ban Instant a game ban. too, but exactly. Because... I mean, to be honest, uh, I think the draft here from Rex so should almost sort of counter Uggy and the sort of lineup from Nelson. Yet they're they're fighting strong actually. They've already got one set of racks, so arguably they are ahead. And 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 if they're fighting against a draft that should lose, then obviously there's some questions raised about Uggy and it, and its sort of power. So if it's me, I'm I'm gonna ban Uggy every single time if I was the captain of Rex Hearts. But obviously we're still in game one here. Um, the next item for Dark Play. Honestly, this sounds a really really troll, really really weird, but I think she should actually pick up a refresher. I <laughs> know it sounds ridiculous, but she needs, honestly, 20 seconds of, of shrunken head usage. If she does go for that, then her her damage will be significantly less, and, and that's one one thing that, that is a little bit in question, because Ugi's incredibly tanky now, so if she does pick up the refresher, yes, yeah, she won't get, be able to get locked down, but will she have the damage to really cut through Ugi? And it's going to be a, a question of whether she picks up maybe a Savage or Rift Shards or she picks up the, the Refresher. Yeah. If the lockdown is good, Rex here, if they can get the team support, then she won't need to go for a Refresher. But for the last couple of team fights, she really hasn't had the greatest lockdown from, from Devour and Tempest to really dish out this damage. So I guess the next team fight will sort of decide on you know what item build she needs to go for next. But um, honestly, the Refresher wouldn't be the worst choice here. Come out from it's, I, I, I like the logic that you're getting at. I definitely think there's definitely some good logic to it. But actually, Cersei, that is the real 
Imperial Cersei that they found. So Magnus, we'll see if he can actually pull out a kill out of this. No, no dust or anything. And that once again could prove to be the difference maker. Looks like Cersei. Oh no, she runs into Polywai now. The image is going to be wearing off. She goes to the TP. Polywalk W. Oh, oh, couldn't press it in time. So gets away right there. Oh, chase still happening actually. Now Magnus finds Devour. All of a sudden, Devo doesn't have a port key for five more seconds. In fact, he's going to be war trapped now. And Devour is also going to be picked off, it looks like. Yeah, oh, he tries to go for anything in a turn kill, but yeah, obviously not going to happen. And he goes down. So, yeah, a couple like big picks actually, all of a sudden, happening. He does have a bot back, though. Uh, so. Oh, Cersei bot back right away, too. Interesting. She actually bot back uh, immediately. I, I don't know why he used Shrunk and Head. Like, he, but just accept the death and then obviously make sure you have the yeah. Shrunk and Head the next team fight. Because if, if Nelson starts start pushing now, then he has to buy back. He's not going to have a Shrunk and Head, so. Uh, gonna be a little bit questionable, but at the same time, Nullstone don't have their Poliwog uh, wards, so maybe they won't push in on that. But um, um, I mean, yeah. one thing's for certain though, uh, with the like, someone else needs to pick up an Abyssal Skull though for Dark Lady because she can't be wasting one slot for like a, an item that only costs like 2,050. Yeah. Like, uh, maybe the Vera picks up an Abyssal Skull, he does have 2,200, and then obviously, yeah, it will allow Dark Lady to pick up like a Wing Bow or like a Rift Shards or Savage Mage, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but I want to go back earlier. I mean, you mentioned the rest of the stuff. Again, I get the logic, but that will also require a rebuy in the Shrunken Head, which in itself, I mean, that's a good chunk of gold right yeah. there. So you're looking at nearly like 7,000 gold for the ultimately that investment to pay off, and it's like at this point in the game, I don't know if you could really go for that. So it's, it's good logic, but I think, yeah, just going for more of the damage focus here probably makes ultimately the most sense. I mean, you could argue something like a Behemoth Heart with that said. That's kind of yeah. a similar idea as far as similar staying idea, alive, sort of surviving. but yeah. at the same time, uh, yeah. At the same time, they still have great lockdown, though, from Poliwog, Magnus, and Rapsi. And, and although Shrunk and Head is obviously useful in terms of stopping the magic damage, but it's also useful in terms of stopping the lockdown as well, so you can't get stunned or, or whatever in that respect. But, um, I mean, you actually see Resto uh, Warbeast quite a lot, actually. I know Casey likes to go uh, Resto Warbeast all the time, like, because obviously you need to have the ultimate to be useful. Like you can have like double uh, Shrunk and Head and, and double ult in that respect, but I, I, I don't think we're going to see it. Like, I mean, in Wretch Hag as well, it's not really two of a... Well, yeah, but oh, oh as a big hook on a Rhapsody, has a Void Talisman, going to mitigate some damage, but not nearly enough. And that's a Bound Eye as well, so big find there uh, from Rex. But I, the, the, the other bigger thing for me, though, as far as the Rest of Stone possibility, is like Dark Lady's skill set really doesn't scream Rest of Stone yeah, at all. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the uh, ultimate, I mean, I yeah, guess. It's the ultimate's bad, not honestly. bad to have a Wrestle Stone 4, but yeah, it's not like a huge stand I know what you mean. I, I mean, I'm only thinking about the Shrunken Head, and, and probably it's, you know, not the most common item pickup, but again, it really just depends on how much, you know, how much good team support that Rex has can offer. Like, if Tempest and Devour are on, on the ball in terms of their lockdown, then obviously Tempest, uh, Dark Lady won't need the, the stress though, but. Now, it's definitely, yeah. Uh, um, this pickup here has a third Conqueror kill coming up here, and I don't know. No stone's gonna be able to stop this. I mean, Rhapsody's dead for another 20 seconds. Obviously, the Rexars knows this. They got some Cersei vision here with the illusions. Yeah, this is gonna be a free Conquer kill. That's gonna be bananas as well. So keep an eye on who gets that. But uh, Polymer Priest going the staff of the Master, and, and I don't know how you feel, but I, I mean, again, I just don't like it. What? Compared really? to what the, well, it's because we're talking about earlier the lockdown. They need the sheep stick. They need the yeah, Hellflower. Like but, I mean, Polywell Priest offers a lot of lockdown. Obviously, they've got Sheep sticking now on Ugi. And, I mean, the push potential with Staff the Master uh, wards from, from Poly is it's a lot of damage. And also, the, the sort of physical damage coming out from, from Mass Rudy wards is, is going to be really important as well, obviously, because they don't have any physical damage, really. So, the Polywell wards, if they can get like a, a good position on it, can do a lot of damage. But I do, I do know what you mean. Um, I think he will go Sheep Stick after. But. I think Staff Master isn't as bad because it will allow them to actually sort of push in very, very quickly, particularly if your Rex are start pushing top, then they have the ability to sort of split push quite uh, significantly with the, the yeah. Polywog Force. If he goes Restless to follow, which is very likely, then I guess there's a little more logic to it because, as you're saying, yeah. I mean, the, the, the split yeah, so. push in the, the Rat Hawn, as we're starting to call it, as of late. Is, is definitely very possible for Nolster Gaming to start pulling off here. I mean, we saw, we saw plenty of that actually last weekend. Uh, yeah. There's some crazy finishes no, involved much. that, so. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh, um, Polywog is going to lead the way, pushing the bottom. Speaking of that, all five are down here, so. I don't know, pushing into token Dark Lady is a little bit questionable. Like, we talk about Resto Stone just to sort of increase his survivability, but, I mean, token does that, but even more so in that respect, so. Um, what did Dark Lady buy? I feel like she's bought she something. Dawnbringer, really. I know, but she's button. had that since, and she had like 5,000 gold just about, I thought, and now she's done a 4,200. Uh, she hasn't bought anything else, I don't think. No, she bought um, Rift Shards, that's what it was. I know, she did buy Rift Shards, yeah. Uh, I saw okay. her buy it, I just think she might be holding on to it until the token falls off. I guess. But then, 
I think Devourer definitely needs to pick up on a business score though. Yeah. Dark Lady is not going to have this for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Well, she shouldn't anyway in that respect. And yeah, she won't have the um, obviously the passive armor, but that's not the biggest of, biggest of deals, honestly. Um, another sort of a really late game armor would be a lot more useful. Maybe the Wing Bow or the Savage or or the Resto Breaking. It's always possible. <laughs> you yeah. really. I like for these unique ideas that you like to push for. It works, man. It works. Hey, no, again, I, I, I do agree with you. The logic is there, but the likelihood of actually seeing it is very, very small. So, People uh, are too, uh, too boring. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. There's a level 25 Dark Lady, by the way, on top of that. He actually just got, I believe, all the way to level 4 Rift Shards even. So, again, she's not actually... That, that's kind of curious. I mean, she actually doesn't have it on her, nor is she... Now, they don't have another got killed earlier. They haven't re-bought a Courier. That's something else that's kind of a big deal. So, she's sitting with she's a level dead. 4 Rift Shards in her inventory, or in her stash even. Yeah, I mean, her, her next item should be post haste though. Um, because it, there's no point like selling your Abyssal Sword just to pick up a next item, because then you won't have, to, you won't have a, like, a TP slot open for you anyway. So, it makes no sense um, to sort of go for the next item. I mean, Rift Shard is fine, because obviously she can um, take it after the token of life, but she definitely needs a post haste though, eventually. But it does look like level 4 Rift Shards now as well, actually. I, I'm just shocked that, that we've seen it go back to base so many times now. Nobody has bought a courier. I mean, I know it's later on in the game. It's not maybe as like a big of a deal, but still, it's so little gold. You think it'd be worth the investment, but they don't have one for the time being. Um, I will say Cersei's level 15, so she doesn't have the 100% damage just yet on her. Oh, look sauce, what she's doing look there, what she's doing Exactly. This is, this is what I was saying earlier. Like, I was trying to say to her that like, this is what she do to try and delay the push, but I mean, even at the late stage of the game, it's still really important because she can just have so much pressure on the, in the bottom lane. And, and now it really does sort of split Northstone away because Northstone, they're incredibly strong as five, but they don't have the greatest sort of split pushing and pushing potential outside of obviously Polywog, Priest, and Keeper, but they don't have the greatest way in terms of sort of catch, uh, catching people um, outside of, say, Polywog. World Priest as well, so um, just good play count from Rex. So I think late later stage of the game they, they do have this because obviously the Cersei, Tempest, and Dark Cloud is just a little bit stronger. But at the same time, I said that before, and Ugi just completely decimated. So I'm uh, gonna sort of keep my opinions to myself when it comes to Ugi because he's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beaver being Ugi again continues to just show the true power of this hero and. Again, on paper, it seems like a very strong mid to late, or, or excuse me, early to mid game, even kind of carry presence here. Even but late as far game, as a late game, yeah. but that's the thing, like, I don't know, <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying. On paper, it feels like that it's not really yeah, the strongest man. late game, but we have seen it at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> do uh, do wonder. So, uh, really, in reality, it seems like it's, when it comes to late game, apparently he is pretty damn strong and up there with some of the stronger carries. So, um,. God, I mean, there's a lot of gold being pulled up on either side, man. There's, there's going to be some big items coming out here. And token's got to be... Oh, yeah, it already wore off. Yeah, Rift Shard's level 4 get delivered, so... They do have a courier needs, now, by the way. It's a ground courier, but it's a start. She needs post haste, but, like... I mean, because if she doesn't go post haste, then she's sort of limited to just only her side of the map. Um, I mean, I, I guess if she... You can understand that she doesn't want why she doesn't want to sort of split push on the other lanes because they do have some good catch potential with Polywell Priest, for example, and the Sheepsy from Ugi, but still, like, you have to have post haste just in terms of being useful all around the map. But yeah. Decides against it. And I wonder who's going to pick up that Abyssal Skull as well. Like, even Tempest should pick it up. Like, someone should pick it up because you can't have Dark Lady sitting on only an item worth, like, 2,000 gold. It's just too yeah. cheap. Uh, well, I think it's one of those cases. I mean, when she actually needs to buy that next item or has enough yeah. gold, to, then, then we'll yeah. see that happen. But for the time being, it's, you know, might as well hang on to it. I mean, sure, she wanted gold saved up, but, of course, buybacks are important in a game like this with the very least saving up for that here. And uh, going to kind of get a feel for it. So, yeah, Polywalk Priest, though, again, sitting on the staff of the Master, another 1,700 gold saved up, so still a ways off of a possible Restoration Stone, if that happens to be the follow-up. But uh, Magmus going for a full Demonic himself, perhaps, has that Soul's Bulwark. We see that uh, progression quite a bit, and we get a point that they could use that, and even more so now against the Dark Lady with those level 4 Rift Shards, so could prove to be very powerful. Once they get that. Cersei actually got the portal key, by the way, and is level 16, by the way. So, again, that, that's a pretty important mark. Has 12, 15 crit. Jeez. Not like creepy from Dark Lady, but uh, Twist of Massage now does 100% damage, as well as only being an 80-second cooldown. So, ideally, you know, every single fight, that should be up and good to go. And now now we're going to possibly see her target the Oogie, is what it comes down to as well. Uh, because she uh, has the capability of doing 100%. I mean, so it's, it's, it's arguable. Like, I'm sure in the end it's going to come down to positioning and what she can get she'll take. But it, I don't know, what do you think if you're Cersei here? Do you actually go for the Ogi or do you still want to get that keeper with the double uh, 
Well, uh, honestly, I think it should be the Keeper of the Forest. The reason being is because we talked about how the lockdown here for, for Dark... Sorry, the um, sort of setup here for Dark Clay is really, really important. Obviously, they've got the Tempest and Devourer, but... I mean, if you give, like, everyone um, on the... Everyone on the Legion sort of on, on the plate for Dark Clay, then she can easily do the damage, but... It, I think it's the lockdown is going to be a little bit of an issue for Dark Clay, so I think Keeper of the Forest would be a little bit more important because, obviously, he's got the double Resto Stone now. Also, the double root because of the Resto Stone, so... I mean, Ugi or, or Keeper of the Forest is fine, but oh my god, that portal key was so close there. Yeah. Always getting picked up. But um, yeah, I think Keeper would be slightly more in favour, but I mean, you, you can't say Ugi would be a bad pick up here in terms of yeah. being used. Like so. I was saying, it's really positioning, I'm sure, in the end, and yeah, she'll get what she can take. Other than I mean, in terms of me, my personal, I think Keeper would be a little bit better because obviously Dark Lady does so much damage, but she needs to obviously lock down to, to do the damage, so I think Keeper. Been up the resources here as the Legion side. Nilstone doing continue to do plenty of that. Can the stats say this has continued to be a very even game? And honestly, it has been. I mean, hell, 17 to 17 hero kills. The golden experience. I don't think it's been over like 5,000 for either which way on either experience or gold. So this is just really a back and forth even game and definitely anyone's game. I mean, we have the facts as state, you know, both teams are in a pretty good spot. I mean, darkly, I will say, usually, as Quincy was pointing out earlier with the stats, I mean, usually at least over the 600, if not 650 GPM in our winning performances. So 530 is still very high, but here we go. Magnus Dunn's in. Beautiful hook. We've right. seen plenty of those, man. He's doing a great job of those hooks. Actually saving darkly. Look at the background. That's Cersei jumps in. That's a ballsy Cersei, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very risky move, but in the meantime, Dark Knight, oh. okay, the ultimate is up, but she couldn't do enough. Nice boy Talisman from Rhapsody, yeah. and they have to fall back. Yeah, the That's uh, pretty cape. the ultimate was used right there. Kinesis, there's the hook to stop the tongue tied in. Here we go with a full fight. Oogie said, the mask control, the background on the back. That is going to fall without doing too much right there. Team in the meantime, the Shogunate is up. Protect the melody, it's going to save Oogie. But the jab is ultimate will stop, and Oogie's in trouble, and Oogie's going to fall right there. Big fight here. Looks like four Rexars and a 1200 plus crit coming oh. out for Darkly on so top well of it. Well played indeed from Rexars. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the coordination there was just perfect because, I mean, Tempest jumped in and, and you're saying, oh, why didn't keep a root, why didn't keep a root, but Devourer actually was ulting Keep of the Forest while Tempest was ulting. So it's perfect play both from Devourer and Tempest there. And this is what I'm saying. If you if you get the lockdown and give it to, to Darklane, she can dish out the damage. And that's exactly what they did there. They got enough lockdown onto Ugi and, and Darklane just ripped through him. So... Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think that the rest of the sun is definitely not needed now because the lockdown is just starting to come online now for, for Rex. So they're getting the, the perfect um, sort of positioning now in team fights, and, and now they're pushing into Rex, and OPS going to have to force the bar back. So. Yeah. It's as he does right there. That's obviously one of his two buybacks, so he still has another one here. In fact, he even has enough gold for it currently, but. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've been stressing the, the lockdown. I mean, sure, has a sheep stick, but even a health on top of it, that wouldn't be a bad option to follow it up, I'm sure. We'll see what that eventually happens, if so. But here comes that counter push from Rexars. Yeah, that's where, I don't know if Oogie we'll buying back. I mean, I guess they're going to be resurrected here. So yeah, probably ultimately does make sense. As the tar pick comes out, followed by Free is going to be in the front lines. No wards or anything. Still 10 seconds remaining on that cooldown. And actually, they will save the Rax initially. Devo, he has a hook. He's going to use it right there. Pulls and wraps to the outcome of oh. the boy Talisman. Magic Tam is going to be too strong. There's the Tabithalim in the background. It gets canceled immediately by the Keeper Root, though. He does not have a Resto Sonner. He does, but he's already used it. So no second ultimate. Devo in the meantime going to be locked down. Oki, meanwhile, doing his thing once again on to Devo. Gets the kill right there. Tabith goes down. Beautiful coordination coming out from the Legion side. And both Dark Lady and Kinesis have to get the hell on out of there. As they do, yeah, I mean, Dark Lady is going to be fine as well. So. Clay couldn't even team fight in that in that in that team fight because the, her strong head was still on cooldown. So like, you saw like if she jumped in there, she would have instantly just got bursted down and killed. So, yeah, I mean a little bit questionable from Rex. Well, they stayed around even though the strong head was down from Dark Lady. They were really fighting 4v5 there because Dark Lady just if she jumps in, she's just gonna die. They do rebuy the strong head, but it's still down for sort of 10 seconds because of the cooldown. So. I want to say this this Void Talisman pickup of Rhapsody has proven to be very yeah. effective, too. I mean, we, we've seen now several times Dark Lady go in as a follow-up, and all of a sudden she can't do anything uh, because, obviously, immune to physical. So it's proven to be a very strong pickup for Rhapsody, and good choice there on, uh, on her part. But, yeah, now Dark Lady 6,500 gold saved up. You see Cersei constantly spawning the Dark Lady Illusions. Another pause coming out here, but Conger, wow, it is about to die unless the pause is bugging it, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's about <laughs> no, to die. I'm pretty sure it's the, That's a five, five HP. <laughs> Look at that pause, man. <laughs> Look at that pause. Clutch pause timing by uh, 
But Rex Yeah, they've been having several of these and kind of just readies right after. So, yeah, apparently some DCs, but not too long once again. Again, guys, this is just game number one here of what is the best out of three. Both of these teams trying to move on to what would be the loser's bracket finals. And that would be the first match tomorrow. They play the loser of Willow Keeper Sink, which will play later today in the winter bracket finals, of course. So we got plenty of Han left uh, ahead of us here, not only for today, but, of course, the whole weekend here. And that's a damn good thing, of course. Can't wait to see how things progress. But, yeah, what a way to start it here. And what's truly going to be a great finish, no doubt. I mean, <laughs> already been a very good game coming up to the hour mark here. Yes, once again, a lot of gold being pulled up on either side. I'm, I'm most intrigued, though, to see that Dark Hoodie especially. And what she uh, yeah, I mean, picks she's up got here. so much gold. I mean, she could easily just save for sort of two buybacks, so that's really kind of rare. Normally, you only need to have one to really make a difference, because if you have two, then most of the time, if you buy back, then you're going to be on your own on itself, so not the biggest of impact. Well, goes, so, I mean, she needs to sell that Abyssal Skull and somebody else Yeah, yeah like I said, there. like someone else needs to pick it up, but they they kind of all just have kind of negated it. like Because if she sells the, the Abyssal Skull now and no one else has, ha has picked it up, then she doesn't really have a, any kind of way of life stealing. Yeah, she could pick up the Satanic and, and somehow try and um, attack modify sort of swap, because obviously she's picked up the Dawnbringer, so obviously both of them don't stack. But at the same time, I mean, the, the Ice Brand isn't that big of a deal in terms of a uni unique modifier compared to, say, Satanic, or sorry, to Symbol of Rage, but... Um, I don't know. Like, I'm just surprised. You know, none of the team have really picked up that abyssal skull because it's such a big impact, honestly, because of what it really gives. Like, yeah. um, like 12 plus base damage and 12 percent life still. Like, it just seems ridiculous why no one else has picked up. Because obviously, Dark Lady will need to sell it, but they're kind of negating it for their own items. Yeah, obviously, Devourer did pick up the demonic breastplate, but it's arguably that you probably should have picked up the abyssal skull before you picked up the, the breastplate, honestly. But oh well. Well, I, at the same time, I honestly do, uh, like, I was kind of looking more and more about this Abyssal Skull here, and, I mean, I'm looking at the Legion side, it's not like they're a very physical heavy threat, I mean, sure, the lifesteal in itself is nice. Yeah, but it's not about the armor, though, it's about the lifesteal and the plus base armor, like, 12% plus base armor for, for Dark Lady is about, like, 30, 40, maybe 50 you mean base damage. damage. Plus, okay. Yeah, base damage, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, and so, yeah, it doesn't really matter about the armor, it's about the, the plus base damage and the plus 12% lifesteal. Yeah. Um, and for Dark Lady, that's just a huge amount. So, like, cause she's got she's got no other way of really life stealing. And after the Shrine Lady is down, then she can get you know eventually burst it down from magic damage. But if she has that life steal, then at least she has some kind of presence in the team it's fights after the, the Shrine Lady is down. So. Well, there we go. There's going to be the counter kill, and immediately happens right there. So, token of life. Who got the token? Polywalk gets the token. That is curious. I mean. I, 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 mean, I can understand. Yeah, you yeah. see Ugi's inventory. It's like really. I guess he could have sold the gnomes. Or even just dropped it mean, for now. But. I mean, Ugi's probably not going to be the first person who's going to drop either, so. I guess I can understand that, yeah. but it just seems a little bit strange. Yeah, that's fair. That, yeah, like, that's true. Yeah, Ugi does survive, as we see. Um, and I was here we go. Pushing to the base, the hook attempt. Going to hit a creep, unfortunately, so not, uh, not really much they're hoping for there. The. the Voodoo wards, I mean, that's the Staff of the Master, so three more wards as a result, but yeah, that's again why I'm just not a huge fan, honestly, the Staff. I mean, that, that's where you could argue, I think, he should have just gone Resto first, if that's the case. Because at least then yeah, that's yeah. refreshing, you know, your shrunken head, if anything, you know, your tablet, your abilities in general, as well as giving you double wards, which in the long run is more than, of course, what a Staff would apply, so. Yeah, I don't know, but anyways, they don't really push into the base as a result, and... Rexer's doing a pretty good job of holding there for the time being. I'm looking at this Dark Hoodie, man. 6,800 gold. You, you would figure at buying that bigger item to replace the Abyssal Skull, even if it means not having an Abyssal for now, I think I you're right. Think yeah, it's yeah. worth it here. I think Wingbow. Wingbow or Savage, I think, depending yeah, on. Yeah, yeah Wingbow's like one of those Legion team, right click, not the most threatening, but at the same time with the Cersei Spawn of Illusions and just yeah, herself. I mean, yeah, I think that's a good. Just the increase in terms of like the. The movement speed and, uh, sorry, the attack speed and obviously the agility is just really useful as well. Yeah. Well. It could, could go savage as well, I guess, but I don't know. Happens. It's, uh, it's up to her. Maybe that's why she has a funny thing. She is. <laughs> yeah, she's still trying maybe to she's think about it. Yeah, maybe she's thinking about it. What oh. she really wants here. But, uh, and maybe Resto too, Devo is close Resto to the Abyssal Skull, so. Resto is not needed now, though. Like, you see the last <laughs> couple of team fights. The, the, the last couple of team fights, the lockdown from Rex has been perfectly fine, so. I mean, I only suggested that because some of the, the lockdown wasn't on point, but now it's been on point. I don't think they, yeah. they really need it now. They can just go full out damage, and they do need the full out damage compared to, to see, like, you know, 3,000 HP on Boogie, and that's just not even it, though. It's obviously the, 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 the region and the health he's getting back, so. Yep.
picks up buys another shrunken head as well. So I'm surprised he's kept the gnome's wisdom though. Like yeah, it's good obviously because of the healing aspect. It sort of synergizes quite well with obviously with his ulti as well. But again, one of those items that one of his team could have picked up, similar to actually Dark Lady. Like the Dark Lady Abyssal Skull on the gnome's wisdom on Oogie is it's almost like surprisingly stark and similar actually. It's quite yeah. funny. But... <laughs> well, several of these heroes getting their longest game records now. Just last weekend, there was what that was, that was the 80 plus minute game that we had. Oh man, that we jumped cool. into. Yeah, uh, that was the Shrek versus Rex stars, right? I think that was. Mm, that yes. There, so. so a whole weekend ago. It's hard to remember. <laughs> Top of your head, but um, yeah, we're up to 63 minutes here, and he did the post days. Yeah, coming out for Dark Lady. So we're gonna start seeing more, she more of that happening. She rebuilt the as well. Did she? Uh, yeah, which oh. is the right place to make. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So that was a 10 second shrunken now, yeah. Yeah, that was a, yeah, the 83 minute plus Rexar. So Rexar's familiar with longer games. You could say they have the longest in record for Haunter season three here. And uh, it's the, to think that that's still 20 minutes away. <laughs> that's how long this game has been. That is pretty crazy, but. The rat haunt is real. I know so many people get frustrated when I say that. <laughs> They're like, it's rat donut, it, damn it. Stop trying to steal it. <laughs> Guys, come on! It's all—it's all in good fun here. We, we like Dota as well. It's, we made that pretty clear. Um, anyway, so here comes the push bot. I mean, I feel like No Stone's almost just repeating this over and over again. At the same time, though, I guess it's really the options aren't really there, and you might as well. I mean, another set of wards comes down, and oh, obviously they got the resto middle as well. Is it a resto? Yes, yes, a resto. No set of wards. Asian oh, there's the mid hook, and there we go. The second wards make them attack the main racks right here. Looks like they are. Out comes the invulnerability, and look at those wards drop, though. So, yeah, very good defense coming out. That's from Rexar. There's not enough pressure. There's more challenge. Oh plus, that crit is real. He goes down. Anyways, Devo now jumps in. The hook is going to miss right there. And Oogie, Bravo surges up. Here we go. He's looking to make something happen, but a lot of shrinking that's being used. Can't do much against that. Of course, start cutting down the chase. Automatic in the background. Oogie locking down Devour in the meantime. With the assistance of the Polymog race, and down goes Devour. Looks like, yes, he won't fall. Polymog now with the lockdown of Tavis. The root comes out, and Tavis is going to fall. There's the root from Cersei Keeper. The root from the real Keeper. The second root from the Cersei Keeper comes out. It's just all over the place. Back to back to back. Roots right there. Dark in the meantime, though, she's being locked down, thrown in the air. She's now down, though. Go for Keeper the Forest. Ogi is still alive. No problem surge up currently, but he's being oh locked down. The Tempest on the man with that buyback. The lockdown has rolled all over the place. Paul is tapping out. He's going to be fine. The Restoration Stone on to Tempest. He has a second ultimate. He's going to use it right there. Ogi again locked down, and Ogi will go down. Rexars comes out on top once again, and now they need to defend their base. It looks like they already were. Pushing out middle is Devourer, and here we go. Rexars chance now. To make something happen, a lot of buybacks have been used. These Tempest Ultimates, man. Yeah. Oh my god, like, I've honestly, like, it's, it's been like three or four massive Tempest Ultimates coming out from Rocky Balboa, man. Like, he's been on point with these Tempest Ultimates, like, catching four or five heroes and at their most clutch potential as well. Like, Dark Lady was definitely gonna fall there. Like, they had the sheep taking the lockdown from him after, and then he comes out and lands like a double Tempest Hole. Oh my, oh, jeez, man. MVP already. Smashing it, but yeah, here comes the the counter push though, or uh, well, the speed push coming from Rexar, and the Rexar are exposed now. There is a buyback on Oogie, but that would be his last buyback actually, and he left the buyback though. Yep. Come I mean, it's Rex. it's like, yeah, can you not can you risk not buying back? I mean, they, uh, d maybe they just figure they won't have enough defense anyway. So yeah, I think that's where it's at. It's like if he buys back, you wouldn't really be able to do much enough at least. So the middle will go down. The second set of racks are so not going to be as free here. Oogie has to, like, it's only 50 seconds, but I, I mean, he probably has man. to now, right? Yeah, keeping the forces up. There we go. There's the buybacks. A lot of TPs coming in. The Hellborn team Rexus needs to be careful. They are starting to fall back. Will it be successful? Magnus chasing. <coughs> nice shrug ahead from Devour. Not going to TP right away, he, actually. Uh, There's he a portal key. Now, no, yep. he could have portal key in time. Did. He had a. I right. think that's what he's going for. He's going for the PK, but it came up right yeah, as like, the shrug and war. If off. he's shrug and heads TPs, then like, he can't die. Right? Because yeah. unless they want to blow the root, but then that's kind of a, a good trade in, in that respect. But, True. Yeah. I just. I'm really disagree with that choice. Because like, he doesn't have a buyback now, and now easily no stone could TP. Like I know like he thought he might have been fine because Dark Lady and Tempest were around, but it was only them two, and they're not going to be able to fight 5v3. And and now, like, they're not going to be pushing 5v4. So. Wow. We're talking about Rexar's having really. that experience in longer games, but look at Nullstone there. 3 0, actually, compared to the 1 1 hour plus game. So, <laughs> Nullstone actually even argue, well, more experienced and more successful in that sense. And uh, again, the lead here 8,500 gold lead, 9,500 experience in here in favor of Rexar's oh. crowd control. On Kinesis, Kinesis, lockdown, and she just melts away. Honestly, Kinesis' impact 
Hasn't been as big as you're probably hoping for if you're Rexar's here. In the meantime, locked on Tempest in the background as he pops the Shrunken Head trying to get away. Dark, that was a real Dark Lady. Holy crap. She just melts it. She does buy back. She had 9,000 gold saved up, by the way. There we go. She buys a Behemoth's Heart here, and she still has gold for another buyback. So that's where you really got to question, man. Why was she sitting onto that Abyssal Skull for so freaking long? Yep. Could have just done this earlier. But anyway, she has and it now, but it's too late. That one pickup from Devour was so big, and now he's going to go in 1v4, but... He has to do anything, I don't think. I mean, he might get the kill to Magnus, but that could come at a cost him. He's not careful. Keep it the force root. Not going to be up, I guess. So, actually, it's fine for that. But there's the Sheepstick Demo coming in, but kicking their time. <laughs> and Dark Lady does go down. Has the second flyback. No one she did, so it's got a reckless right there. Now she comes back in. They know they need to prevent Mega Creeps, of course, or else the game is absolutely over. So they're doing all that they can. Beautiful sudden from Magnus to lead the way. Onto the bower, Magnus uh, now in a little bit of trouble as Dark Lady's on it, but now Dark Lady getting locked down once again. And look at the collapsed honor, even with that Behemoth's heart, she has melted away and she will go down. That should do it. Null Stone Gaming going to pull out the GG here over all Rexars. That. Holy crap. All that, man. All that because of one pick up from the road didn't have a buyback. They, they oh take the gosh. team fight bottom when Tempest is having an ultimate. I mean, they're fighting a 5v4 after the Vow gets picked off in the top lane. And without Tempest ultimate, there's no way they're going to be able to lock down Nullstone in the game enough. The Dark Lake dish out the damage. So, man, that whole game, I obviously don't want to sort of criticize too much on the Devourer, but like that one pick of honestly was the game changing moment right there, Breaky. Yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. And especially when you're pointing out, like,